Duskmourne House of Horrors might have dropped one of, if not the most powerful and definitely combo-y colorless commanders of all of Magic. Now that is quite the statement considering some of Magic's most powerful cards are colorless Eldrazi, however they will dig deep at your mana with casting costs well in the double digits. Instead I present to you Marvin Murderous Mimic, a 2 CMC 2-2 artifact creature that has all activated abilities of creatures you control. Even if you include this in the 99 of other decks, this card enables so many potential combos to just outright win the game. However, that's not what we're doing here today. Instead, I will offer you a more balanced and casual version of Marvin that still allows you to activate some busted abilities. So in my attempt to power down this colorless toy, I put a clear restriction and theme to the deck so you actually feel some sort of fulfillment when you pull it off. We will be running a ton of non-creature artifacts with strong abilities and then animating them into creatures to double up on their activated abilities with our Commander Marvin. If you enjoy our videos and our themed builds, be sure to subscribe and even request what commanders we should build next in the comments below. Before I move on to the deck, allow me to show you the degenerate combos I did not include that every other video would tell you to run. But feel free to play magic as you want and include them in your version if it's something you want to do. So with Marvin as your commander, there are a couple of combos you can run. First, we'll start by casually making infinite mana. With Marvin out, if you have any creature like Palladium Mirror that can tap for 2 mana and Pillapala out, you can then tap Marvin to make 2 mana and then use that 2 mana to untap Marvin because of Pillapala, netting 1 mana in the process. This allows you to continue the ritual and generate infinite mana with only 2 other creatures. Now with infinite mana, all you have to do is sink it into something like Staff of Domination to draw your deck in win cons. But there's a key word there, win con. So let's move on to the combos that just outright win you the game. If you want to win with commander damage, feel free to do that same loop with Palladium Mirror and this time partner with Farmstead Gleaner. This allows you to tap for 2 and then use that 2 and untap to put an infinite amount of counters on Marvin. But Marvin has no evasion and can be easily blocked, so why not include Walking Ballista and Triskelion to use those counters to dish out infinite damage. You can also turn those counters into card draw with Mindless Automation or Mana with Crystalline Crawler. While impressive, not everyone is looking to win via the same combo every time they play their deck. So instead, let me introduce you to my version of Marvin, one that intentionally scales back on the power level to allow more unique lines of interaction. The premise of this deck is to take artifacts with strong activated abilities and animate them into creatures so we can double up on their activated abilities. Even if we're unable to animate them for our commander, we still get to use their powerful effects that will have huge impacts on the board. The first section I want to cover as we always do is ramp. Ramp will be crucial as we want to be able to 1 cast our big CMC artifacts and 2 activate their abilities hopefully more than once. So we have some of the basics with Soul Ring, Mind Stone, Thought Vessel, and Warren Power Stone. These are low cost artifacts for our early turns. Planner Atlas is another great artifact to get out early. On ETB, it can get a basic waste to our hand to play on our next turn. But it doesn't end there as we also have Basalt Monolith, Everflowing Chalice, Hedron Archive, and Dreamstone Hedron. Having ramp that can double up as card draw in the late game can get us to that final card that we may need to close out the game. The Might Stone and the Weak Stone is another fantastic card that acts as card draw or removal upon entering that then taps for mana. And we can't forget about Blink Moth Urn. This artifact will provide mana to everyone based on how many artifacts they have, and we're bound to get the most out of the card. However, that mana is not shared if Blink Moth Urn is tapped, so if we don't want to share the mana, we can turn Blink Moth Urn into a creature with other cards that we have in the deck and tap it by attacking. But let's move on to Magic's strongest effect, Drawing Cards. Now there is card draw spread all around our deck in the form of our ramp and utility cards, but there are a couple here that we get to sink our mana into. Diviner's Wand is a wizard equipment that allows the equipped creature to pay 4 mana to draw 1 card. It's not the best trade off, but it's card draw nonetheless. It also gives our commander plus 1 plus 1 and flying until end of turn every time we draw. Tawashi Guidebot is another artifact that lets us draw cards for 4 mana, but this time the cost to activate can be reduced for each modified creature we control. There are plenty of ways to meet that requirement and pay absolutely nothing to tap and draw a card. Endless Atlas will let us pay a fair 2 mana for one card as long as we control 3 lands with the same name. And similar to that, Endbringer is more utility than straight card draw, but I figured we'd be activating it 9 out of 10 times for the card draw. 2 mana for one card is almost unbeatable, and it untaps on our opponent's turn. 
But what's not beatable is getting to pay one mana to draw a card every time our opponents draw a card with Mind's Eye. We can hold up our mana for turn and then draw a minimum of three cards. But with the basics taken care of, it's time to move on to our main theme, animating our artifacts into creatures. Today's deck features three cards that turn our non-creature artifacts into creatures, giving our commander Marvin their activated abilities. We included Karn the Great Creator and Toymaker as one-time effects on a turn to turn something into a creature. However, this deck's accolade is far stronger and that card is Karn Silver Golem. For as long as we have one mana, we can turn any number of our non-creature artifacts into creatures. Not only does this give our commander their abilities, but they also can be used for big swings as we have many high CMC artifacts in the deck. These cards shift you into second gear, providing great value since the deck is built around their function but does not rely on it. But before I move on to show you what we'll be animating, we have a couple of cards that further assist our commander in doubling and possibly tripling our activated abilities. Abstruse Archaic is a 3 4 with Vigilance that lets us pay only 1 mana to copy any activated or triggered ability from a colorless source we control. The Peregrine Dynamo is very similar, but only copies effects from legendary sources that aren't our commander. The deck has plenty of legendary activations, making it worth running. Lithoform Engine and Rings of Brightheart will allow us to pay 2 mana to copy any triggered and activated ability. The engine even lets us copy any other spell we play, either paying 3 or 4 mana for the copy. But the real hidden hero of this deck that will double all colorless spells and triggered abilities is Echoes of Eternity. This 6 CMC colorless enchantment will copy all the colorless spells we play. Although it does not copy activated abilities, doubling up on all our colorless permanents is more than enough for this card to allow us to run away with the game. We also have some pseudo commanders in the deck. Both Mirror Welder and Agatha Sold Cauldron exiles cards from graveyards that then give the mirror its activated abilities or passes them out to all creatures with 1 1 counters. They are just fantastic includes that can snag us any activated abilities that we may want to use from our opponents. But I think it's time to share what non creature artifacts we'll be running to hopefully animate into creatures. Chaos One has been a pet card of mine that I could never really fit into a deck. For 4 mana, we target a player and exile card from their deck until they hit an instant or sorcery that we then get to cast for free. It's a fun interaction and gamble to see what value you get. Dino DNA will let us exile creature cards from graveyards that we can then make copies of for 6 mana. Magistrate Scepter can net us extra turns, especially if we're able to untap it and give it more than one counter a turn with cards like Manifold Key. Mirage Mirror will turn itself into any artifact, creature, enchantment, or land on board. This card has so much utility in this deck, allowing it to be a huge value beater or even just stealing someone's activated ability. Prototype Portal will let us exile an artifact from our hand to then make copies of it over and over every turn. Trading Post has just a paragraph's worth of activated abilities. We're able to gain life, make tokens, return artifacts from our graveyard, or even draw cards. Yggdrasil Rebirth Engine is another interesting banger that exiles creatures from graveyards and from the top of our library. You can then pay 4 mana to put a creature exiled with it onto the battlefield under your control with haste. And to finish off our artifacts, we have a couple that straight up tutor cards and permanents to our hand or battlefield. Planner Portal, Sentinel Flu, and Rings of Three Wishes will get us any card to hand, while Planner Bridge will put any permanent in our deck into play. These cards are insanely strong and will allow us to search up our animators like Karn or something of pure value like Unwinding Clock so we can activate them every turn. While the deck does focus on non-artifact creatures, we still have some creatures that have abilities of their own. Amaranthan Wall will give itself indestructible along with our commander, while Cogwork Assembler can copy any artifact for a hefty 7 mana. Cryptic Trilobite puts counters on itself that we can then trade in for mana. Drillworks Mole also puts counters on itself and our commander. Kodotha Forge Master lets us sack 3 artifacts and in return tutor any artifact to the field. Scarecrone returns artifacts in our graveyard to the field and Steel Overseer hands out 1 1 counters to our artifact creatures. Voltaic Construct lets us untap an artifact creature, but Ulamog's Dreadsire has to be the best one yet. It's a 10 10 with Vigilance for 10 mana that simply taps to make more 10 10s. This can get out of hand fast if we also have our commander out, making two 10-10s a turn. I also want to include some utility cards that really round out the deck. Ugin the Ineffable acts as ramp, making our colorless spells cost 2 less while also manifesting the top card of our library. Crypto Thrall provides much needed hex boosts to our artifacts along with swift foot boots. Thematic Compass will ensure we don't miss land drops while also acting as a maze of it once we get it to transform. 
Thousand Year Elixir will provide our creatures with activated abilities haste and can even untap one. Shimmer Mirror gives us Flash to sneak out big plays on someone's end step. Wandering Archaic will be all value, letting us copy our opponent's spells if they don't pay the 2 mana. Then we have Forsaken Monument that will double up all our mana, pump our creatures, and even gain us life for casting colorless spells. Mystic Forge lets us play the top card of our library if it's an artifact. And then when we really need to close out the game, we can use Aetherflux Reservoir to gain a ton of life and pay 50 of it to then blast someone from existence. We can even copy that activation with our Rings of Brightheart or Lithoform Engine to kill two players at once. And with that, the deck is complete. It was fun to try and build a restricted version of Marvin because he alone has so much potential. For a complete list of the deck, including the many utility lands I included like Rogue's Passage and Mirror Pool, see the deck list in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and let me know what other cards you would include in the deck.